Uh, on that note, we did have a question was, if you planted hairy vetch and crimson clover at the same time, which one would provide the fastest amount of nitrogen in the spring uh, as far as like when they're terminating? Uh, depends on time of termination. Uh, crimson, where crimson is adapted, it will uh, start fixing nitrogen earlier in the spring, start growing earlier in the spring than the vetch, but it also finishes quicker. And vetch has a higher capacity to fix nitrogen, but goes later to do that. So um, I like the combination of the two. I mean, it's one of the situations where diversity is, is a good thing. And purple and red together, you know, kind of a beautiful marriage sometimes. Like K-State in Nebraska, Dale. <laughs> it can work. It can work, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that's 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 assuming that you're far enough south where crimson and clover will reliably overwinter. Yes. I think once you get north of I-70, it's hit and miss. Uh, you know, up here where we're at in southern Nebraska, I can say that I've probably really only seen crimson clover overwinter well once, and overwinter sort of well two or three times, and the rest of the years hardly at all. Yeah. Now along I-70, it's more like probably three years out of five. And some of the newer varieties of crimson clover, like Kentucky Pride that we've been carrying, uh, is supposed to be quite a bit uh, more winter hardy, maybe maybe 10 degrees better temperature wow. than the, the Dixie that uh, is the main crimson clover variety out of yeah, and we're trying to switch over to all Kentucky Pride, but it, there's just not enough of it out in the market right now. So we're we're slowly transitioning over to the better types as as production uh, comes up on it. 